All right, we are back working on this caricature cowboy figure. This is video number six. I'm not sure how many it'll take, but we might be able to be done in about 10 or 12. Right now, we're just making the face. Profile. Thickness. All I'm doing is I, we have, to recap real quick, we've, we've decided the face is gonna be as narrow as the crown of the hat. And so we're just trying to narrow down that face. Cause that's gonna be a huge determiner of what we do from this point on. Uh, again, it's a caricature carver and carving. And so we can do a lot of things that you normally couldn't do if you were doing realistic carving. I see a lot of my carving uh, inspirations when I look at carvings from Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Austria, Austria. and I'm impressed with the carvings that they do real, uh, realistic, true to life, and I'm thinking I'm not sure how you can do that uh, in, in wood, but they do a fantastic job of it. I'm not trying to do that. I know that that's not my focus and it's not what I really want to do. Uh, there are so many people that are really good at that, that for me to try to do that, I would, I would pale in comparison for a number of years. I would, I would struggle with getting to that point. I've gotten to the point where I'm fairly confident, fairly competent in doing a caricature figure and I've been had a, a little bit of success at doing that I'm not the best that's ever going to come along mainly because I don't have enough time left in my life to devote another 50 years to this I'm I just turned 58 I'm not really interested in spending a lot of time trying to be the best I can best in the world I'm trying to be the best I can be and that is something, certainly a goal that I have a reasonable expectation of attaining. I'm trying to do the best I can, pass along a little wisdom, have a little fun along the way. Anyway, I am simply on this one right now, real quickly, just trying to shake that face. We had talked about the face, again, not being any wider than the crown of the hat. And so you can see this one's a little bit narrower than this one. So I've taken off more over here than here. And if I wanted to leave room for a sideburn, I can. But I could take this all the way down because in, in, in essence, this face is going to come to a profile. And so this is going to come to a narrow profile. So I don't really have to leave that extra, extra room there for a sideburn. It's, it's going to be built into what I'm going to carve after this anyway. And so I can go virtually right up to that line and get where I need to go. So again, this is about layout for the most part. If you lay it out and you have a reasonable amount of skills in carving, once you lay out your carving and you carve to the lines that you drew, you'll have a good amount of success at getting where you need to go. I'm going to say it again. You get tired of listening to me, turn it down. But you need to round. You need to get that carving round as round as you can. And I have learned that the hard way when I go to put a, a carving in in the past into a competition and the judge says, why didn't you car, car, why didn't you carve this rounder? And you know, when you say I did and they show you that you didn't, you don't you don't have any more leg to stand on. They're, they're showing you right there. Well, it ain't round to me and I'm the judge. I get to make that determination. Left a little bit, but if you look at it, the head is about as the same width as the hat. It's a little bit more over here, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Okay, what I wanna do now and start to look at where the other other gross anatomy is going to go. I want to see where, even if I'm not going to put it in there, where would it go? If I were to say there's a belt on this guy, and we can do anything we want with him, but if I want to say we're, we want a belt on this guy, if this is the back side of his buttocks, the part that sticks out, then that belt should be just above that. 
So that's where this guy's belt would go. Okay. What that now allows me, this is the, this the, this should be the line separating the top of the pants and the bottom of the shirt. Okay. That allows me to figure out. I'll worry about the details on the front, but it allows me to figure out where the arms are going to go. Again, if this guy's gonna, hands are going to be tucked into his pockets, these I deliberately moved them way back so they're, they're back. And I've got others that I moved them even farther back. But in reality, if we want to make it so it's like one of these flat plain Scandinavian ones, we don't really have to put that in there, but we're going to. That looks like the, I mean, it looks like his hands are in his pocket. Or the hands could be in the jacket. It's, it's, it's left enough open to imagination. We're going to put this guy's hands in his pockets. And the pockets, knowing that we're going to round all of this, the pocket is going to start, if you look at pockets on men's pants, it starts at the, the center line, the, the, the lateral line that goes down the side of the seam. And that pocket goes somewhat like this up to the up to the front top of the pants. And so his arm would come in like this. Which is which which looks about right, depending on how long you want that arm to be. And so there is roughly his arm with his hand tucked into his pocket. That starts right there at the top of the pants. And if we were to remove this line there's your pants pocket there's that center line that it goes down to if you look at a man's pockets that's roughly where it's going to be and so that allows us now to put in the gross anatomy because the back's going to be rounded over to here if you don't know what this looks like grab somebody and say hey stand right there with your pocket hands in your pockets and let me see what that looks like and draw that in. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Got the sideline coming down here. We'll change that as we need to because it doesn't go in a straight line. Sometimes it's got little dips and valleys. There's the pocket. I brought it a little bit too high. Let's bring it down some more. Which means I think this arm I drew a little bit smaller than that other one. We'll make it a little bit bigger. A lot of people are worried about drawing lines on your carving because they're worried that they're going to have to take them off and worry about it being dirty. I used to wash my carvings. I got out of that habit once. I put simple green on the carving and it wasn't quite wet enough and everything turned green. And simple green or palm olive or any colored detergent would stain this wood that color. So I, I, I kind of hesitate to go that way anymore. So now I don't even wash them off. I make sure that if there's a line there, it's not that much trouble to carve it off. And if your gloves are not dirty, you're not transferring all those colors onto your wood so you don't have that problem. I know it's a problem for some people. I, I'm just simply saying I've never had that problem with what I'm doing. All right, we worked on the head. Now we're gonna work on the ear. And I told you the front of the ear was in line with the front of the hat. I'm also gonna tell you the back of this line is in, is in line with the back of the hat. So if we were to draw a line straight over, I cut that in a little bit more, we would draw a straight line over that gives us a triangle that makes kind of sense. And so the two triangles should look roughly the same size. And if not, you can take a look at them. And actually, if you look at it, I've cut this in a little bit deeper than this one. So let me get back in there and get that back to the same line. looks a little better it's those little things that you watch out for it's not you know it's still not there it's those little things that throw you off that make you go why is that not look right but 
anyway, there it is, a little bit closer. Still not perfect, but that's all right. We're going to take a lot of those ears off. Anyway, I've got the I've got the rough size of the triangle. And if you've got a set of calipers, you can you can measure that just for your own peace of mind. But I can I can bet you these things are fairly close. And so what I'm going to do is take off a good portion of the stuff behind the ear because that's going to be hair, and that can be way back there as far as I want. We'll take some of this off so where we'll narrow that ear down as narrow as we want to. And then what we'll do is angle it in because ears are a triangle that's that's angled in that way. And so we'll keep we'll, we'll work on that. I'm going back to my V tool and I'm just going to put that right in there. And I just want to take off that cut right there. Be careful because if you slam into that hat a lot, you're going to have a lot of cleanup to do. And that's never fun when you spend 10 hours on a carb and then got to spend another two hours doing cleanup because that's the tedium. That's the detail, the stuff that's not really fun to do. It's fun to put in all these gross anatomies. It's fun to start painting it. It's not a lot of fun to sit here and piddle play and putter with the little fuzzies down in there. All right, I'm gonna make a stop cut behind the ear or under the hat. I'm gonna make a stop cut right behind the ear and I'm gonna make a stop cut right there at the top of the collar. And then I'm just going to take that those pieces of wood out. I just want to take them out because I'm trying to separate the ear. And so there's a lot of different ways to make that cut. I'm going to do the mine because this is one of those details that's back up under the hat. It doesn't show much. And the way this hat's rounded, a lot of this is going to go away anyway. I got a lot of tools in the in the pot to use, but I'm, I'm trying to keep this down to one or two tools because if I drag out a lot of specialty tools, we're doing this with hand tools and we're trying to do it for those of you that don't have a lot of a lot of fancy tools well let's see how you know uh, i'm not arrogant enough to think I'm, I'm one of these guys that's i carved this with one tool ain't nothing wrong with that but for me i i think it's more about using the tools you have and so what we're doing is we're going to spend a couple minutes just removing some of that wood we're not going to get it all out until we round that hat because the 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 brim of the hat will come around that way. But we, what we want to do is just separate that ear a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. I apologize if it looks like I'm going fast. I'm not, it's just the way I carve. I carve fairly aggressively and I carve fairly fast and I want to, I want to get to the final details. I don't want to spend a lot of time on hogging. It's fun to do that to an extent, but after a while you're your hands start to get hurt because you're gripping that knife so hard hogging off a lot of wood that it just gets to be tedious and so all I'm doing is just trying to get some of the some of the features to pop out because we want to get them to know where they go then we can really really go to town on adding details and making it stand out with a little more of the gross anatomy. Okay. So we got the head head thickness shaped. We've got the ears outlined. We've got the top of the hat. And we're going to continue on. We'll start rounding the body, working on the legs, working on the arms here in a little bit, and then we'll come back to the face because honestly the face is going to be the hardest one for most of you because I hear a lot of people complain about how faces are hard to do. I get it. I understand because um, you know I, I think I've got a video on there that talks about practice and confidence and you can view that video because it talks a lot about how my carvings had progressed over the years and how bad they were to start with simply because I just didn't know how to do faces very well. Anyway, we're at 14 minutes and 30 seconds so we're going to stop this video and we'll pick it up on the next one. I'll talk to you later.